So Susie, uh, floor is yours to talk about uh, DFT. Yeah, all right. Um, start. So uh, I'd like to thank Roland for inviting me to, to give a talk here. So uh, hello from sunny Virginia. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, new Libxy interface in Open Mocas. <clears throat> so uh, um, what is what is LibXC? Well, DFT is the workhorse of electronic structure theory. Uh, as you all know, uh, you can avoid the uh, exponential scaling model for solving the wave function by switching to uh, caring only about the density. And it's used in over 40,000 papers every year. So this is a number from recent papers by Kieran Burke. Uh, now, the problem is that, that because we don't know the exact functional, uh, we have to use these density functional approximations in practice. And this is, uh, for instance, the meta GGA form. So uh, your uh, exchange correlation energy is integrated uh, from the uh, exchange correlation energy density. And this density then depends on the electron density, the reduced gradient, uh, which is here. And then you can have dependence on the Laplacian of the density and the local kinetic energy density. Um, if you look at programs, uh, usually they only implement something like you know five or ten or whatnot. So I, I had a look at the uh, Open Mocas uh, version twenty two point oh two manual, and I could count something like twenty three unique functionals. So uh, exchange functionals, correlation functionals, or exchange correlation functionals. So the the typical ones are of course like thirty one LDA. Uh, we have PV B three lib uh, TPSS and so on. Uh, so Open Mocas previously did not implement anything uh, above GGAs, I think. Uh, the general issue is that when you have these independent implementations of functionals in different programs, uh, you can't really reproduce uh, calculations un unless uh, you're, you're extremely lucky. So uh, unless the implementations have been really uh, properly validated in, in all programs. And historically, this is not the case. Uh, that uh, you run the same calculation uh, in two different codes, so you use the same functional, you actually can get different results. Uh, so the, the issue here has been uh, big, uh, like how, how do you reproduce a calculation performed with another code? And because the choice of functionals typically uh, also depends on, on the uh, use case of the code. So, you know, physicists use PBE, uh, chemists use b 3 lip so, Historically, uh, you didn't have B3LIP in physics codes, and you might not have had PBE in chemistry codes. Now, uh, this is a paper from last year uh, where they do full numerical micro heart rate position uh, calculations, both multi uh, resolution uh, basis sets, and they, they see that, oh, like actually the functionals are not the same in ORCA and MRCAM. So you have differences of several kK per mole, uh, which is of course uh, saying that your your uh, micro heart rate uh, accuracy or precision is is uh, completely irrelevant because the the functional gives you an error that is a thousand times bigger. So it's really important in re like modern day research to actually have the same functionals. So B3LIP is one other funny example. So if you look up the uh, original paper from 1994, you see that the definition has the voskovilk nusser functional from 1980. Uh, so uh, the problem is the, the VVN functional they implemented in Gaussian is not the one that VVN actually described. So the VVN paper, they recommend a functional, but that's called VVN5. Uh, not VVN3 that they implemented. And, and I think also like the name VVN3 is kind of confusing because that's not uh, what is, for instance, in LibXC. So VVN3 in LibXC is not the RPA version that uh, Gaussian uses. So this had the unfortunate consequence of completely fucking up the literature uh, terminology. So if you look at any paper before this, this one, the VVN, in, in those papers refers to the recommended functional. Of course, like why, why would you use something else? But after, after B3LIP, uh, 
including open hole costs. Uh, so if if you uh, ask for a VVN, you get VVN, this R version, not the uh, accurate version uh, trained or, or fit to quantum Monte Carlo data. So yeah, the, the problem is that because the paper did not describe uh, the, the functional properly, then uh, people who re-implemented the functional in different codes, they, they went with a VVN5 version. And uh, then you look at the computational chemistry list, you will see lots of discussions at, uh, on, on why are these programs giving me to completely different total energies uh, because the, the RPA variant uh, the, the correlation energy is going to be very different from the quantum Monte Carlo energy. So you, you actually get some quite noticeable differences in total energies, even though uh, properties are uh, similar. So uh, yeah, so the, the B3DIP was published in 1994. And so three years later, you have this paper explaining like what, what is actually B3LIP. So uh, it is actually based on this Vivian 3 version, uh, which was not like described in, in the original paper. And nowadays, uh, I think all codes give you the same energy. So uh, I've, I've run uh, Sci4, QCAM, and WCAM. These all have independent uh, DFT implementations. So Sci4, of course, uses LibXC, uh, but these all agree with Gaussian to very high accuracy. Okay, so the next problem is that there are actually hundreds of density functional approximations. So uh, this is a funny, funny story. So uh, Miguel Marquez, who is the original author of LibXC, he gave a talk 10 years ago. And so he gave a guesstimate of uh, maybe like 250 to 300 functionals. And if you look at LibXC today, we are actually have more than 600. So th there are lots and lots of functionals uh, actually um, so the uh, basis set exchange, it also has something of the order of 600 basis sets. So now you calculate what is 600 times 600. That's a pretty large number. So I mean, there are lots of lots of levels of theory you can form just by combining base sets and, and density functionals. And the functionals keep published every year, keep on published every year. Uh, and just keeping um, keeping track of these is, is a fair bit of work and uh, implementing them. So, um, uh, and, and yeah, furthermore, so if, if you have a code that can do meta G, um, so analytic Hessians of meta GGAs uh, at TDDFT level, you need fourth order derivatives. And uh, so the energy density is already typically quite complicated. And now you have nine input variables. So if you calculate how many independent fourth order derivatives do I have, you have a number, so, so like 495, but you actually need to implement also like the previous order. So you have something of the order of 700 output variables. And of course, you're not gonna do this by hand. So you need an automated approach to uh, calculate all of these uh, derivatives. All right, so this, this is an introduction to LibXC. So I'm, I, I try to argue that a standard implementation is really beneficial. So there's no need to keep reinventing the wheel. So implementing functionals from the ground up in every code, because the functional form is always the same. Uh, it doesn't matter what numerical approach you use. So you could use Gaussians as in open molecules or plane waves as in WASP finite differences as in uh, podcasts or finite elements, whatnot. So um, the, the only difference between these approaches is the uh, uh, order of the derivatives you need. So if you do SCF in Gaussian basis, uh, because you can integrate by parts, you only need first derivatives of the exchange correlation function. Um, if you do the solid state physics thing where you take a GGA and then you construct the local potential, there you get, I think it's like a divergence of the functional times the density gradient. And uh, yeah, so anyway, you get second order derivatives there. And you have all of these other nice, nice um, uh, properties as well. So, so if you have the same implementation in all programs, then uh, 
you, you, you can be sure that the implementation is the same. Uh, you know, you only need to fix bugs once, and then they, uh, this fix becomes available in every code. You only need to implement a new functional once, it becomes available. And now uh, this approach is also back, backward than forwards compatible. So you write a new code that uses libxc, you can run uh, obsolete functionals, or uh, you link an old code to libxc uh, and you get all of these new functionals. So this is uh, basically what was done now with open mockups. So libxc, um, the, the uh, most recent publication is four year, from four years ago. Uh, it's a software X. So if you use libxc, please cite this. Um, so yeah, as a summary, uh, libxc just gives you the density functional contributions. Uh, it also provides uh, stuff that needs to be evaluated elsewhere. So, uh, because this now depends on the numerical approach. So if you have, let's say like D3lib, a hybrid functional, then you need to evaluate the exact exchange, Hartree-Fock exchange. And uh, now it makes a whole lot of difference what, what kind of code you have, uh, because a plain wave code is not gonna evaluate exact exchange the same way as a Gaussian basis code. Uh, so this is why uh, there's a splitting here. So libxc, um, basically packs all the parameters. So for double hybrids, you could have like a fraction of MPT correlation energy. And, and these are these are then uh, just described sort of in the interface and uh, you can get them automatically. All right, so uh, with libxc, we just get a standard implementation and we can use the same functionals in our codes. Uh, we have support for exchange correlation, exchange correlation, and kinetic energy functionals. Uh, we have, you know, like pure functionals, global hybrids, range separated hybrids. So PBE, B3LIP, uh, Omega B97, X-3, for instance. Um, there are many kernels you can use for the range separation. So typically you use the error function. This is used in CAM B3LIP or uh, HSC, uh, there's also some functionals that use the Yukawa form uh, that is useful for full numerical approaches because it has a nice um, rearrangement in terms of Bessel functions. So it's easy to implement uh, with full numerical calculations or like, let's say Slater type basis sets. Uh, we have, you know, the, the four derivatives and we have a really permissive, what's a public license which is why libxc has been included in a number of uh, proprietary programs as well. So I have a overview here. Uh, I haven't updated this slide since the beginning of the year. I think uh, some more codes have been added to the, this list uh, after that. So open Mock has as one example, uh, but you can see that uh, there are codes that rely on a variety of approaches. So you have plane waves, real space basis sets, uh, Gaussian basis sets, linear, uh, linear wise augmented plane waves, some atomic codes and uh, some like LCAO programs. So that, that use numerical atomic orbitals, I guess. And uh, especially now after open Mokas, the plurality of our users are Gaussian basis codes. So internally, um, libxc uh, is based on Maple. Uh, we implement all the functionals using Maple uh, because, like I said, you need something like four, seven to generate something like seven hundred equations. So uh, this is very feasible with Maple. Uh, we also try to verify all functionals against the author's uh, reference implementations. Uh, this takes quite a bit of work. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually preparing a paper on this. Uh, so you can keep an eye out. Uh, I hope to get it out in the upcoming months on, on archive. So um, this is just very convenient. So let's take R2 scan for instance. So we implemented it within one month of its publication, uh, even though the, the equations are like four pages long just for the energy density. So you can, you can imagine how complicated the derivatives are. 
Okay, so let's take PB exchange. Um, so I've, I've written out the, the exchange energy density. So you can rewrite it in terms of the LDA, exchange energy density times an enhancement factor. And then this enhancement factor is this uh, Fx of S, uh, where S is a reduced gradient. Uh, so you see it's one plus kappa times one minus kappa over kappa plus mu times S square. And you, you have the maple code below and you see that uh, that's exactly uh, how it is. So Libexi has uh, these maple routines that automate a lot of things. So uh, when you implement an exchange functional, you only need to basically implement this enhancement factor and then it will automatically build up the functional. So what happens is that it, it takes the spin up part and the spin down part because uh, you know exchange, exchange energy separates by spin. Um, and then uh, well, once you've implemented the uh, energy density uh, uh, per particle, uh, so we, we actually implement this um, epsilon xc, not fxc, which is the den density times the uh, energy density. Yeah, I might be missing a uh, density here uh, in, in front of e, e of x. Uh, and then Maple evaluates all of the derivatives of this f of x, which is the uh, energy density uh, analytically. And what you can also see here is that kappa and mu are defined through these params a, and this is actually uh, becomes a pointer. So it, it reads in these values uh, in the maple kernel uh, from uh, the C side. So you can set these parameters for a number of functionals in, in LibXC. So the interface I think was included in, in the latest release. And so in open all counts, uh, you can use any LDS, GGS or meta GGS Including, including those that depend on the Laplacian. Uh, this is not supported in, in most programs. So most programs, they only implement the tau, uh, so uh, local kinetic energy density uh, dependence. Um, and then you can use global hybrids. So what you cannot use are range separated hybrids because uh, open cost doesn't have those integrals. And then uh, double hybrids will be supported in a, uh, future release of LibXC. So I, I don't know if there are plans to include support for double hybrids in open cost. So um, how do you use this in open cost? You can actually um, specify the functional in the input file. So if you take this arc scan functional, for instance, uh, it splits into an exchange part and a correlation part. So these functionals are implemented separately in LibXC because Sometimes you want to uh, combine, uh, let's say, rt scan exchange with uh, reg TPSS correlation, for instance, and then this this is possible with this uh, format. So what you do in um, open mocas now in the SCF block, uh, I think uh, you you include this KSDFT is equal to. Um, so if you put a number here, then it reads in the list, or you could just put the um, keyword for a functional, and then it will use, just use that functional. So I, I ran this um, R2 scan geometry optimization on water in the depth to SVP basis set uh, in open mall class and site four. And you see that the energy only differs by something like four micro heart tree, which is pretty good considering that uh, the codes probably use different geometry optimization thresholds. Um, and, and here's an example for the MN1500 functional. Uh, so hybrids are usually, uh, or they're denoted in LibXC with this uh, HYB underscore uh, prefix. And again, uh, I get really good agreement with uh, Cy4. So this is even smaller than uh, for R2 scan, which is still somewhat uh, grid dependent functional. So I, I used, 100 times 590 grid for these calculations. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to use larger grids because of some uh, hard-coded parameter in open cast. I filed a bug about that yesterday, so I hope that gets, gets fixed soon. Um, yeah, so as a summary, uh, 
Libx is now interfaced with OpenMolcast, and you have standard implementations of over 600 inst functionals. And, and um, this interface is uh, thanks, thanks to Ruland and Ignacio uh, for a great deal. Uh, so they did most of the coding. Uh, so you can see the uh, list of functionals in WebXC on our web page. And um, yeah, I'd just like to thank the National Science Foundation for the funding for MOSI and Amigo, uh, who is the original author of LibXC. Thank you. Thank you, Fosidi. Uh, we have time for a short question. Yes, Ro. I want to say. So say. Yes. Hello. Uh, I have Hello. A question. So, so you said that now you can compare apples with apples. Yes. Then, then the two cases you showed up, there was still uh, differences in the entities, and you yeah. that, that has to do with the convergence thresholds. I. Well, it could very well be that, but there's another part where there is a complete mess still associated with this, and it's the numerical quadrature and the mm -hmm. size of your, your quadrature points. So, where are the pruned and not? When are you going to take the full step and have a library that gives me the integrals, standard integrals for a given Gaussian basis set? So, the the numerical quadrature like like if you if you want to do this benchmark comparison the numerical quadrature does not really matter or the specifics as long as you uh, make the grid large enough so uh i routinely converge calculations between codes to something like 0 0.1 milli my or micro uh so the the numbers i gave here uh you know, these are with geometry optimization. So I didn't change the SCF convergence uh, defaults nor the geometry optimization uh, default. So typically when I do uh, very precise comparisons between codes, uh, I um, use fixed geometries and uh, then then uh, use, use larger grids than I was able to use in open mocas at the moment. Right. So, so if you, uh, I, I, I still think this is sort of a problem. I remember when I started to code up intervals. Yeah. And I, I run let's say Gaussian and did an SCF, and I could be rest assured that if, if, if my intervals were coded up, I had eight, nine, or ten significant figures that we agree to Gaussian. Whereas when you do DFT. If you get four or five, you're happy. Yeah. So there is actually, uh, there are like standard implementations of uh, DFT quadratures. Uh, so, yeah, I, I haven't looked into those myself yet because they are, I guess, like relatively recent. Uh, but I, I can send you a link All right. later. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.